What's up on Power Ask Crew? Today's video, we're doing a phone mount, actually. I've seen in the forums and the Facebook groups and stuff, where do you mount your phones at? Come on, everybody, drop pictures where you mount your phones at. Well, this is the option that I come up with, and I like it. I've kind of looked at different pictures and different options to my cat, and some I liked, some I didn't, you know. But now that I've got this one mounted, I like it like this. Check it out. And there it is. Now, placement. That's going to be totally up to you where you guys want it. That's where I like to put mine. Heater control is not too much obstructed. I don't mess with the heater controls much most of the time. I get hot air flowing. I'm good. I'm, I'm monkey with the radio more than I do my heat, so there you go. Now, the parts I'm using are made by Ram Products. And no, they're not, they didn't give them to me for free. I actually paid for these parts. And so you got to get an honest review from me whether they get someone gives me parts or not. I pay for them. They give them to me, whichever. I'm giving you my honest opinion, and you'll see that in this video. And also, look, made in the USA, yes. So they're very solid parts. I like them, except for the suction cup mount. That thing is. Mm. Anyway, if you guys want to check it out, let's stop the gabbing and get on with the video. We're going to start out looking at the pieces we got to deal with here. One thing I want to stress before we start getting too deep into this, this is the larger one and this is the smaller one. The mistake I made the first time was that I ordered the smaller one. My cell phone would not fit in it. But I do have one of those big metal cases on mine. I am very rough on my cell phones. So what I'll do is in the notes down there, I'll put the links to the large one and the small one, and I'll label it as such. So this is the larger one, this is the smaller one. And what you need to do is pay attention to the ad when you go into the Amazon car, into the Amazon ad, is it shows you the dimensions, the maximum dimensions here. So you want to measure your phone before you order the appropriate mounting pad. And I've got a no junk cell phone in there. I may use this one for, for I don't know. I don't know, GPS or tunes or who knows what. I don't know. I'll figure out something with it. But anyway, get the appropriate mounting here for your cell phone size. And they just simply pop in. Like you take this, pop like that, boom, done. But you got these little arms that pops off here at the side that helps hold it in like this. Things get really rough. But honestly, I mean, You can see I'm shaking it pretty hard. It ain't going nowhere. So I really don't think those arms are necessary. And here they are. And I'll show you on this one how they mount. You see right here, there's a screw. And it's they got the little recess screws right here that the nut's right up inside in. So when you tighten it down, it holds the nut in place while you tighten it up. And you can adjust these to different widths, depending on how wide your phone or phone case is. But as you can see, I think it's pretty doggone rugged. It ain't going nowhere. I knocked it off center a little bit, but I mean, I was shaking it pretty hard. But just your average going down the road driving, not a big deal. If you're out wheeling and you're using this for navigation for your favorite trail or something, and you knock this off there, you probably got bigger issues than worrying about where your cell phone went. You're probably on your lid, honestly. So, with that being said, so, I tell you what, I will install these right here to show you guys how they go on there. So what we're going to do, open this up. And you find, let's see. Yeah, why not just lay them right there so I can sort through them. Smaller one, smaller one, and this one. So we'll put these inside that groove like this take make sure you get the right nut because the nut fits inside these grooves right here and as you can see here how it fits right into that slot right there that's what we're doing so we'll take this set it there do it the hard way why don't i screw through the little arm put that through there Take the nut, and you're probably not gonna be able to turn it. So what you're gonna do? I got the wrong one. Let's 
sit right there. You might get one or two turns out of it for it to, to start the threads. Then we'll turn it this way. What I do with my screwdriver, and simply take it and tighten it up. Now you'll feel it to one point to where the nut, the screw will get kind of tight. That's because these are nylon lock bolts or nuts. And once you hit that little nylon insert right there, they get a little bit harder to turn. You get a better screwdriver. Get a little more torque on it. So then we're going to take this, size it up. And it looks like I need to move it outward a little bit. Leave that loose. Let's go ahead and put one on this side. Hey, look, Wayne's calling me. You'll see that on the video later. So we got this right here. And find one of the smaller ones again. You get one of your little arms here. I keep wanting to do this the hard way. That gone. Apparently I've not got my P's and Q's together today. There. <clears throat> Insert the screw through that. So we'll do it the easy way, huh? Instead of keep doing it the hard way. It'll insert through there. You see how it comes through like that. Get one of the smaller nylon nylox nuts. Like I said, you may get a couple threads out of it, which which is actually a benefit for you. There, it's catching the groove. Push it down into the groove. You see, it's not turning loose. The bolt there, because the bolt it has engaged, or the screw, whatever you call it. Now, what you want to do is snug it up just enough. There's a little bit of resistance in it moving. Don't tighten it completely up. This right here needs to be snugged a little bit more. So we've got a little bit of resistance right there. I have to force it just a little bit for it to move. Why? Because I'm going to take my phone now. Pop it in here. Okay, I need to adjust this one out a little bit. Push it like that, like that. And now you got the side pieces here to keep from it going flying off anywhere. Now, if you want to be really picky about it, you squeeze them in, snug them up a little bit more, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put probably 30 seconds of an inch gap on each side of them. You see, I got a slight little gap thing going on right there, probably about 30 seconds or so on both of them. So that's where I want it. So now I take the bottom of my phone, push up like this, unhook it from the bottom. I don't think I thought I pushed it, moved it. I did. Let me pull that back out. I thought my thumb hit it and pushed it. There we go. Get up here so I don't, or down here somewhere, so I don't hit those things again. Push up on the bottom of the phone, pick it up, bring it back, and there you go. Now that you've got your side supports where you want them, you don't have to make them crazy tight because you do have the nylock style nuts on the back side. Just snug it up. If you want to, you can always do one more little test fit. Da -da. And you seen how hard I was shaking a minute ago and it wasn't falling out. Well, now that you got the side pieces, you're rock solid. It's probably a pretty strong little spring holding everything in place. So now, what's our next step? Okay, see, here, here. Now, we got two different types of mountain pads you can go with. You got these round disc ones like this, or you got this. So we'll take this one, and you can see here, you line it up, it lines up with the holes here and here. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to take the longer screws here, the longer ones, they go through this, through that. Take the larger of the nylock nuts, set that down inside there, because it falls right down inside that little pocket right there. Take a screwdriver, and just hit a couple threads on it. You don't need to just tighten it down yet. Just a couple little turns. You'll feel the nylock hit. Stop right there. Then we'll come to this side and do the same thing. Feed that through there. Now go there. Set that right down in that pocket right there. And I've just got my finger kind of resting on it. You can do it another way too. You can always put that in there first. Stick your finger over the top of the hole. Flip it over. Come like this and start your screw like that whatever makes you feel better and snug it up it ain't gotta be crazy tight can you see it goes through the nylock 
nylon inserts right there and sits just flush with the back of this. And snug it up good. And there we are. Apparently I got the shorter screw and whoopsie. It's alright, it still works. That's all we needed. So now what's our next step? Now we can determine how we want to mount our device here. You got different choices. And I've ordered a few a couple different options. This is your ball pivot mount right here. And again, I'll link all this stuff up so you guys can get what you want. These just snap in now there. You simply loosen this wing nut right here. And these right here come out so you buy the different parts that you want. So what we're going to do is this will go on this like that. Let's see that'll pivot, rotate, and all that kind of fun stuff. But what I'm going to go with, instead of going this route, I'm going to get these out of the way that I'm not using these at the moment. I got a little sandwich bag back here. I'm keeping all my extra parts in. A little sandwich bag. So now what we're going to do is I elected to go with the suction cup mount. We're going to try that one out. So we're going to take a little suction cup mount here. And the way this is going to work, you'll stick it to the glass like that. And you rotate this. It'll pull this center in, forming that vacuum sticking to your windshield. But for right now, we've got to put our mount on. Right there. So what we're going to do is get it. It's got um, like sheet metal screws, wood screws, or whatever you got in here. put that one there for now feed that through like that sit that right there give it a little turn to lock it in place make sure it's straight make sure your screws going in straight because otherwise you get all cattywampus and crooked and the other two just do bad stuff tighten it up don't tighten it all the way up just kind of get down to as close because that'll give you room to move it around to put this screw in place and get your hand out of the way in case the screwdriver slips you don't stab yourself and snug it don't make it crazy tight because you don't want to crack the plastic I don't know that it would it's just I'm not going to tighten it up enough to find out because you don't need it that tight Right there, I made contact with the top of this, and I'm just going to go, ooga, ooga, a couple of oogas, and we're good. Now, at this point, we're going to take our ball. We're going to loosen this up a little bit more. Snap that in place. So you just keep loosening it until it just pops right in place. Then you take your clamp, tighten it up a little bit, and now we're getting to about where we need to be. So we're going to change the camera position to the windshield, and we'll check it out. Okay, make sure your windshield is good clean, no debris, because you want your suction cup to get the best ability to hold on. Loosen your clamp up a little bit. Well, I'm going to loosen up so you guys can see what I'm doing anyway. Take, push it, let's see. Get down from the mirror a little bit, like this right here. Take, push it against the windshield. Keep pushing it against the windshield as you rotate your lever there. Once that's in place, Bring it up to where you want it, kind of right along on there. Tighten up your clamp. Might want to rotate a little bit. Like that, and there you go. Well, people, just so you know that I'm always shooting straight for you, I'm not going to lie to you about reviews and stuff like that, which I actually bought these parts myself, okay? That suction cup right there, come on, people. Jeep Wrangler windshields are about as flat as they come. It won't stay. It keeps falling off. I'm tired of dealing with it. Option number two. Can you see the lever right there where it turns and then to the locking position and it's on right there. Yeah, look at this. See? Really? Ain't no good. I ain't using that. I'm gonna send this thing back to Amazon.
Yeah. Okay, for option number two, what we're looking at is using one of these mounts like this. We'll take, I'm going to tuck it underneath here. I honestly like this option better. Why? Because my phone's going to be hanging out right along in here somewhere. You just want to be sure that where your shifter is, if your stick shift, you're not going to be hitting your phone. So bring it over this way a little bit. Let's see. What you want to do is make sure your screwdriver will clear, get to this screw right here. So take your screwdriver, because you got to take out that screw right there. So you set it like that. Make sure you've got enough clearance to get to it. And that sits me about right, right there, because it gets right past the pivot ball plus the edge of this. If I tuck it down any further, which I want this lip past this, I want to move it over just a little bit. So right along in there. So I'll put my thumb right there so I know where to bump it. Because I want two mounting locations 180 degrees out from each other, which will be this hole and this hole. So I take them two, keep them in the ballpark across from each other. I have my thumb there for placement. Got this lip tucked back. Hold that in place. Take a drill with a unit bit. I think you is the best thing since sliced bread. Those things are awesome. And notice I'm not going ahead and drilling all the way through. I'm just doing it to locate my holes at the moment. Let's see, I've got a mark there and a mark right there. I've already got my screws picked out that I'm gonna put in there, which came out of the heart. That remember the uh, sandwich bag of hardware I had? Yep, that's where I got those from. So I think I gotta go next step bigger, I believe. To be honest with you. Yeah, I gotta go one more step bigger. So we got that going on. Let's see if check real quick. Which we gotta pull that off anyway. Works. Works. Then we gotta take this cover right here off. We gotta screw over here. Right here. up here and one right there but mine's missing right here there's that now we're gonna take you got this tab back in behind here so you gotta watch that tab there we go drop it down like that and now we'll mount our pad what you want to do is take put your screw through one of your mountain holes. Cut that through there. Uh, and due to the nature of all my chaos here, you're not going to be able to see me putting the nut on the back side because my ass is not that difficult. Next screw goes in here, I think. That screw go in through here. I'll give you guys a camera angle here in a moment. Show you what's up. Put my screw insert thingy in there. Got me a pair of pliers. Actually, it's my welding pliers, but hey, I can make it work. There we go. Easy as that. They don't have to be crazy tight because you don't want to start cracking the plastic and stuff. So it's just for kicks and giggles, I'll grab the camera and show you on the back side. 
Of course, I got the peach stand up on its end right now, but you see the nut where it comes through right here in the bolts. That's all it is. All right, we're gonna put this thing back on real quick. Now that we got it all put back together, we're gonna put this in place. So, my little springy thing on top. And I'm keeping my adjustment bolt to my steering wheel side. Tighten this up just a little bit. Snap it on the pivot ball. Maybe I need to loosen it a little bit more. You rotate it up to where you want it. Get in place. You see here. Snug up your clamp back here in the back so it doesn't move around as much. It's actually pretty solid now. Okay, so some of you is not going to like it because it's in front of your heater controls. But honestly, you want to watch this. So that's going to clear there. If you had a standard shifter ball, so me have my little skull dude there. It's still going to clear. Where's my phone? No, there it is. Push it up in there like that. Bring it back down. There we go. So you see... As long as I ain't like totally jamming gears, I'm clearing right there. I could probably adjust the pivot back here, move it over just a little bit, maybe tilt it toward me a little bit. But of course, my other gears, clearing it just fine. No problem there. And I can also take my charging cable, which the port is open right here, because where my little case opens up right there. I take my charging cable, come from there, loop it over, and I've got this right here. That plug my USB in right there. To charge my phone while I'm driving down the road. So if we're using your GPS here, you got your GPS right here, and you're going down the road, and they'll try to navigate your way and stuff. Versus, you now if I have it up in the windshield, I'm not a fan of having stuff up in the windshield anyway. So, oopsie, the battery died on the camera. Anyway, you guys got the point. You seen the install? You seen how it sets? So really, that's what you need to know. Check this out again, though. Now as you see, my heater controls, I may have to tuck under a little bit, but if you put it over here, you know, so okay, I've got, clears my heater controls, but bring it over here, then you got your glove box, when it drops down, you may be in the way of the mount, may be in the way of the glove box. Uh, or if you didn't have the charging ports and you had it over here, it would probably be a better placement, honestly, if this was over here, then put your phone uh, clamp here, but then you're the way of the radio. So it's really, it's a matter of preference where you want to put it. There's some people that screw straight to their dash up in here and doing it. I'm not a fan of going into the dash pad because, I don't know, it's an old rig, but my dash pad's perfect, so I'm not going to butcher it. Um, but, you know, where you, you got a clock right here. Some people use it, some people don't because you got your time on your phone. You can always put your round circle pad right there. If I got another one in here with me, no, I don't. Put it right here, stick it up right here. That way, you know. As long as you can see your gauges here, just depending on how you mount it, that's totally up to you how how and where you want to do it. Honestly, with my heating control, I most of the time I set it where I want it, and I'm good for the time being. And if it's not a big deal to come up underneath here and say, okay, I need to slide it over a little bit, and here's my fan controls and stuff, it's not hard to adjust all that. And if it's really that big of an issue, I can loosen the clamp, bring it down, whatever. But again, where you mount out, it's totally up to you. But it's solid. I like that placement much better. I do the windshield uh, option. You seen how well that clamp, the suction cup was? That thing sucks. It's gonna go back to Amazon. Uh, that, I mean, come on, Jeep. You can't get much more of a flatter windshield. Now, if it was a curved windshield, okay, maybe I'd understand it. No, I don't get it. But anyway, I'm not gonna use the suction cup any worse shape, form, or fashion. It costs enough that I'll send it back. Uh, I like this option. It's very solid. And, I don't know, I like it. I'm cool with it. So, everyone, I hope that solves you one of your dilemmas on where to put your phone. Because in many states now, there is a um, hands-free law. And so, if, even if you got caught with the phone in your hand, and you're simply checking the time, and a police officer sees you doing that, you, some states will actually give you a ticket for that now. Tennessee now has a don't mess with your phone while you're driving law, okay? So this is an option for you can put it on speakerphone while you're driving down the road if your Jeep is quiet enough for you to do that. Having your phone set up somewhere where you can be hands-free from a legal standpoint and from a convenience standpoint can really help you out a lot. GPS, it's right there. You just kind of glance down. Okay, I need to turn left. Keep an eye on it. Turn left up here. 
do that. It's really close to my charging port. Even if you didn't have charging ports like I have in my Jeep, you know, the, the USB ports, your uh, cigarette lighter thing is right down there. And many people use that for a charging port. So for it being mounted low, like I find that be much more convenient than having it up into the windshield. Now, if you like this option to have a place to mount your phone, I'll drop the links down below in the description so you guys can go find them. There will be Amazon links. And just so you know, uh, those links, I do get a little kickback from them, meaning I get a little tiny commission for them, but they don't cost you an extra cent at all. So by using those links, you help, help me build the channel. So I really appreciate that when you guys do that. Um, I'll put the two different si uh, size uh, phone mounts. You've got to measure your phone to know which one you need, okay? Pay attention to the Amazon listing as to what size maximum capacity your phone. you got to pay attention to that because I made the mistake the first time. Uh, the ball pivot, the little clamp for the pivots and all that stuff, I'll include that down below in the description. So I really appreciate you guys checking out my video. If you guys enjoyed this, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave me some cool comments down below. And I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace out. Lady out.